All right, folks, by now this truck probably needs no introduction. It's the 1990 pickup, and we still have a bunch of work to do on it. Because, as you are aware, we don't really know how this thing works, how it's put together. We're just kind of figuring things out as we go along. So, part of the things we couldn't figure out was the alternator bracket. So, we just went with the good old ratchet strap. Because the ratchet strap is always the right length, and it will always get you the right amount of tension on your belt no matter what vehicle. It's universal, as they say. So it's something you should always have in your toolbox. Um, so, but anyway, like, we would like to replace on that and, you know, make it proper in case we ever have to sell this thing or, you know, whatever, give it to someone that's not autodidactic. I don't know. Um, and the other problem, it's gonna be really hard to see, is an oil leak. Now, the thing about this oil leak is that, well, A, you have really bad camera angles, but B, you can't really see it when the truck is parked level. I only find it because where I park the truck in front of my house, it's actually slightly sloped. It only leaks when it's parked angled to that one side. So in the shop, I can't find the leak, it won't drip. But when I park it on the street, it, you know, pours out half of its oil on the ground. <laughs> so obviously that's a problem. It's funny, like, I don't know what I expected this project to be, you know? Like, I shouldn't be surprised probably that I have to do all this stuff again, because realistically, Pretty dumb idea to buy a vehicle with a disassembled engine that you've never worked on before. <laughs> like, really? I'm kind of surprised I even managed to get it running. Actually, there's one extra thing I want to say to you folks. Um, to everyone that's subscribed in the last couple of weeks, like the three or four of you, thanks. I really appreciate it. Um, you know, it's going to be a long journey to make this channel into something significant. And everybody's got to start somewhere, so hey, we started at 1 and now we're at, I think, 16 or 17 at the time of filming this video. So, thank you guys. I really do appreciate it. Now, if I can only get this fan shroud out without taking the radiator hose off. Oh, I just don't think it's in the cards. We're going to have to take the radiator hose off. Hopefully that's empty. Oh, that's hot as beans, man! Fucking shit! Oh, that's smoking. Yikes. We're losing coolant. We are losing coolant all over my floor. I knew that was gonna happen. That was dumb. We never claimed to be smart. We just claimed to be self-taught. That's approved. It's nice that it's only coolant, so I don't have a giant oil slick now. How am I gonna fix this, guys? I really don't wanna take everything off, but I think I'm gonna have to take everything off. Oh, I just don't really want to take it off. Because then I have to do the oil pump and the flywheel and everything. You know what we're going to do? We're going to do this not the approved way. And uh, we'll get access to this bracket, fire that off, see if we can't get some wire wheels in there to chew out some of this RTV. Because it only leaks when it's leaning to one side, so that tells me it's not really a high pressure thing. It's just strictly like oil is coming over top of a hole and it's leaking out. So I should be able to just like clean it out and then put some more RTV in there and it should stop the leak, which would be pretty cool. We actually ended up getting in there with a Dremel and just hitting it with a skinny zip disc or like a wire wheel, I don't know. Anyway, it got in the crack really nicely. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is shoot some acetone in there. Hopefully that can flush it out. And the acetone, as you folks probably know, will dissolve any oil, dry it out essentially, so that I can squirt a whole bunch of RTV in there, just the same way you would like pump a jelly donut. Uh, and then I'm gonna try and hammer it back to squeeze it into the sides and smear it on the outside even. It's probably not gonna be pretty, but I think it'll work. So midway through status update, uh, we forgot that we actually had to get rid of the ratchet strap, which means we had to take the power steering off. So now the ratchet strap is holding the power steering pump out of the way, which is why I think they should always be in your toolbox. And so we have a bracket. This will do what we need to do. It'll fit in something like this, and we'll be able to move the alternator back and forth and just tension it down with that bolt. I don't know why we didn't just do that when we put it together the first time. This literally would have added like 10 seconds worth of work. You know what I just realized, folks? This has got three rings in it. This truck keeps getting weirder and weirder. Cause like, as you know, this is V6. This is four cylinder. This has three lines in it. And then you go inside the truck and it you can tell like it didn't used to have, you know, there's no AC button, right? So it's weird, it's weird because it means the people that either did the swap cared enough to replace the interior stuff like the radio and make sure there's no AC button and all that, 
but they didn't care enough to do a good job with the wiring. Yeah, scratch your head on that one. Um, or maybe they found a 22RE that had an AC, or er, not a condenser, uh, the fucking thing that goes over here. Um, AC compressor, and this was stuff that they used to use to tension the AC compressor. I don't really know, but I think I'm starting to piece things together a bit more. Either way, I still love the truck. Okay, I don't know how much of that you can see, but we basically stuck the nozzle of the RTV right into the crack and just pumped it. We didn't go absolutely crazy because we didn't want tons on the inside, um, just enough until we thought it was right. Then we went and hammered the bottom of it up to close the gap and we seen it squeeze out. So I think we have pretty good coverage of ceiling and at the very least it should be better than the way it was. So we'll fire it back together and then we won't go for a test drive because the RTV needs to dry. <laughs> Anticlimactic, right? Slowly redoing the work we should have had done already, you know. It's auto did act. That's what happens when you do things yourself. With that said, I did kind of intend this as like a bit of a test of my skills to work on a brand new engine with really like no background on it. So you know, it was supposed to be a very hard project. All right, this is the last part. Fire it in there. And we'll get all our hose clamps on. And then I'll probably do some kind of a fade in, fade out, so that I can check in with the folks tomorrow once I have it parked on a non-level surface, and we'll see if it leaks. Well, it doesn't look like it's dripping. And if you come in from here, there's no drip on the bottom of the oil pan. It's still wet up at the top, but that's because it's leaking from all the way up there. Apparently these timing covers are really not easy to seal. That is like, they're pretty prone to leakage. And from under here, like, that's pretty good. There's nothing really there. There's a bit behind it, but that could be like a pre-existing oil pan leak. Because as you remember from the original videos, this thing was absolutely covered in oil little bonus for those of you that have stuck around all the way to the end of the video. This is the side of the truck after I almost tripped on an extension cord and killed myself. <laughs> um, that one's been treated with something and this side has not been treated with anything. Now I did not use conventional automotive finishing products on that other side. But I think you can agree, especially with the bright lights I have on this side of the shop, that's not looking too bad for a 33 year old pickup. If you guys wouldn't mind leaving a comment, we leave a comment somewhere down below, I guess, that's where all comments have to go. Um, take a guess about what I use. I'll give you a hint. I've used it in previous videos, and although it's a really great finish, it's not traditionally used on these type of applications. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one.